Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be looking at shear tab connections. And specifically for this video, we're going to be looking at single plate shear connections. Um, we do offer a, a double a double angle bolted connection as part of CalcBook, uh, but for this video, we're going to be focusing on the single plate shear connection. So let's talk a little bit about um, sort of what parts of the code we're going to use and, and how we're going to get to uh, our solution here. So in AISC uh, manual, in the manual part 10, um, there's a lot of good information there about uh, different configurations of shear connections, um, and they do have tabulated values for sort of typical uh, layouts, um, and specifically the one that relates to today's video and, and the module for single plate connections is table 1010 uh, in, in the manual. In addition to those tables, right, we are obviously going to reference our AISC specification, chapter J. Um, that's going to give us our, our, our equations for, you know, bolt shear and hole bearing and tear out and that sort of thing. So we'll be referencing those. Um, so let's go ahead and, and take a look at the design check. So there's quite a few different checks that we look at for uh, a shear plate design. The first one is going to be bolt shear, and um, we have two things that we look at here. We look at the the bolt shear due to the direct shear, so in orange, the applied loading from the beam transferring load uh, into the shear tab, and then we also have an eccentricity, right? Because we have uh, uh, our welded connection here at the face, so to the column most likely, and then we have our loading here out on the bolt row. So we have this distance here that we have to account for. So uh, in the in the tables, they have a value um, that you can use. It's a C value for uh, the coefficient for eccentrically loaded bolts. Um, but for CalcBook, we just calculate the polar moment of inertia and uh, apply our eccentricity that way and calculate the the uh, the force um, on the most critical bolt, the, the, the outermost bolt. So we'll take a look at that uh, when we get into the calculation later. The second thing we're going to check is bolt hole bearing. Um, so this is uh, something that we check actually on both the shear tab and the beam. Um, so it's a, a local deformation um, of the bolt hole. So you can see there kind of the deformed shape as the, the beam tries to push down, it distorts or deforms those bolt holes. Look at shear yielding of the plate, pretty straightforward calculation. Shear rupture of the plate, right, so that net area. And then we always look at the weld shear as weld shear as well. Um, it typically won't control because you'll design um, that uh, that weld thickness to uh, to develop the full strength of the plate. So let's do a quick review, right? We've got our bolt shear, we've got our bolt hole bearing. Um, we also are going to check the bolt hole bearing in the beam as well as the tab. We've got the shear yielding, shear rupture, and then our weld shear. So uh, what we're talking about for this calculation is a conventional configuration, right? So they have a conventional configuration and they have an extended shear plate. Uh, the extended basically means that your A, that eccentricity distance to your bolt, is going to be greater than three inches. So in order to sort of uh, ignore that part of, uh, of the calculation, there's a lot of extra checks you have to do on the plate um, and different moments and stuff that need to be included. For the conventional configuration, as long as we keep that A less than or equal to three inches, we can ignore um, a lot of those extra extra calculations. So in addition to that, right, we have a, a single vertical row of bolts as part of the limitations. We have to use standard or horizontally slotted holes. Um, the L sub EV is per AISC J3.4, so that's the just the um, edge distances for bolts. Uh, LEH is greater than or equal to two times the diameter of the bolt for both the plate and the beam web. Uh, the plate or beam thickness must satisfy table 10.9, so there's some minimum thicknesses there based on the bolt diameter. And then, like I said in the last slide, the weld should be uh, 5 eighths times the thickness of the plate. So that puts, if you do 5 eighths on each side of the plate, that is thicker than the plate itself. So we uh, are going to um, develop the full strength of the plate. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our problem statement for today. We're going to be looking at a conventional configuration, uh, one-sided shear tab connection. Uh, we have a W14 by 53 beam with a web thickness of 0 0.37 inches, so that'll be what we'll use for the uh, bolt, holing bolt hole bearing calculation. We have a 5 16th inch thick plate. We've got 3 quarter inch A325N, which means the, the, shear, uh, the uh, threads are not excluded from the shear plane. Um, we've got four of those total. Our uh, eccentricity, our A value is three inches. Our L sub EH is 1.5 inches, which is just, just two times diameter of the bolt. Our L sub EV is 1.25 inches. Our bolt spacing is three inches. 
and our shear demand, uh, LRFD shear demand is 62.5 kips. Um, and that's a very specific value. We'll use that to check our answer against the tables at the end of the calculation. So that is our problem statement for today. Let's go ahead and open up CalcBook and we'll get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now. So let's go ahead and open up the AIC 16th edition. Um, calculation is the same between the 15th and 16th, but we'll go ahead and use the 16th. Uh, we'll go into our connection design, and then we'll click on our single plate shear tab, right? And I mentioned that we do have a double angle uh, shear tab, and we'll do a video on that uh, next time. Click confirm, we'll get that loaded up. So we can start going through our inputs, right? We are gonna be doing a bearing type connection. You can do slip critical uh, if you want, and it will calculate that for you as well. Uh, we're gonna proceed with just a single sided shear tab. And then it didn't state it in the problem statement, but we are going to assume that deformations at bolt holes are a design consideration. So we're gonna change our uh, bolt diameter to three quarter. Right, it's going to give us an error because our, our hole is too small for that. So we'll increase that to a 13th, 16th because that's a standard hole. We have four bolts. And we decided that they are going to be A325N. So we are group A, A325, and threads are not excluded. So A325N gives us an FNV of 54. So leave that as is. Our block shear coefficient is just 1. Our weld leg size, uh, we'll leave this at a quarter inch. It could probably be decreased, um, but for now, it's uh, it's not an important design check for us. We can come back and adjust that if we need to. Our connection geometry, so we're leaving our eccentricity. The A value is going to be 3. Our bolt uh, spacing is 3 inches as well. Our edge distance, our LEH, we decided is 1.5 because that's going to be 2 times our bolt diameter. And then our LEV is 1.25, so we'll update that. And then our thickness of the beam, we said 0.37 inches. Um, it's going to be uh, 50, uh, grade 50, so we'll do 65 KSI for that. And then our uh, shear tab thickness for the uh, plate, we said was 5 16 so that's 0.3125 inches and that's grade 36, leave that as is. And then that is it for our entries on the capacity side. So then we can go over to our demand. Uh, we already have the ultimate load here in LRFD, so we're gonna hit our none option, and we're gonna enter in the shear load of 62.5 kips. All right, <clears throat> and so now let's start going through our calculations. There's quite a few things we're gonna do here. And um, before we actually jump right into that, I just want to uh, highlight here, we have this calculation notes button here at the top. And um, whenever we want to kind of relay some information to the user, we provide some calculation notes. So this is just saying um, that we're not checking any of the beam uh, failure modes except for bolt hole bearing, um, and then just discusses what uh, limit states are checked as part of that. So when you're using CalcBook, um, we try to you know provide you with some guidance on what we're doing in the calculation. So if you see this calculation notes button, you can click that um, and see what information there is. So um, if we start going through our demand calculation, right, our shear demand is just what we entered, 62.5. And then we want to start calculating the force on the eccentrically loaded bolt group. So this is a part of the manual part 10. And the first thing we're going to check is our distance to the most extreme bolt, right? So we have four bolts. So we have two on each side of the uh, center of gravity, neutral axis. Um, and so our CY value is going to be 4.5 inches. We're going to calculate our polar moment of inertia. Um, this reference actually came from the Ashto bridge design standards, but you can find this derivation, um, you know, many other places. Um, but it basically just calculates uh, the uh, polar moment of inertia for a bolt group. Um, I've removed some of the terms here, or CalcBook has removed some of the terms here, uh, because we only have a single uh, vertical row, so there's no uh, component for the for the IY. Um, so we calculate the polar moment of inertia for this bolt group. Then we can calculate the horizontal component of the load due to the eccentrically loaded bolt groups. So this is going to be our shear force times our eccentricity, right, times that distance CY divided by our polar moment of inertia. And that gives us stress. That's what's in the, uh, the AISC code. And then we just multiply that by the area of one bolt to get our force. Then we go on and calculate the load uh, of the bolts in, due to the direct shear, such so as the total shear divided by the number of bolts we have. 
And then we have to combine those, right? So we do square root sum of the squares. Um, and this is just a kind of a, a simple diagram of what we're calculating here on the critical bolt, right? So we have our moment in red, our direct shear in, uh, in, in green, and then we don't have any horizontal shear or axial load, right, in the horizontal direction here, but we provided it uh, just because we have those terms as part of this uh, this equation here at the end. So based on that information, right, we get a total uh, resultant force on the highest loaded bolt, which is going to be that outermost bolt, of 17.68 kips. All right, now we can start going through on the capacity side. So uh, the shear strength of the weld, right, we already said this really isn't going to control, um, but we do run through the calculation uh, for the weld design. Um, and I think we, we'll do some other videos that go more into detail on weld design, but it's pretty straightforward from the, um, from the specification. Then the next thing we check is the shear strength of the bolt. And because we're checking uh, an eccentrically loaded bolt group and we're checking the most critical bolt, right? We're checking it against one bolt. So our capacity here is listed as for, for one bolt, right? It's not the entire group, but that's because our demand is based on one bolt. So just something to keep in note. Um, and we have a, a description here that talks about that as well. Then we're going to go through and check the bearing capacity of the bolt holes. So the first thing we do is check the bearing capacity in the beam web, right? So on the, on the beam side, then we check it on the shear tab side, right? And then we get our design capacity, which is going to be limited by our plate because that is thinner. Then we check our tear out capacity, right? So the tear out plus the bearing or bolt shear from the other bolts in that same row. Then we go through and check our shear yielding, right? Just the gross section. Then we check our shear rupture right, the net section right through the center of the bolt holes. And then we also need to check our block shear, right? So we check our block shear of the tab, right, in that failure mode, in that failure direction. So uh, after all of that, right, we are controlled by bolt shear, right? So you can see down here in the corner, um, we have a DC ratio of 0 0.99, right? So basically 1.0. And um, the, the purpose of that, and I'll, I'll put a overlay here of the, the AISC table uh, 1010, uh, which shows that for this configuration, um, the design limit is 62.5 kips, right? So when we enter this 62.5 kips, we're getting a DC ratio of one, um, which is correlated with the table. So that is um, a single plate shear tab design in CalcBook. We hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we'd like to offer anyone who is still watching the video a 25% discount on your first month subscription of CalcBook. You can use the discount code YTCB2024. Uh, when you uh, download the software and you can purchase that and get your discount on that first month. So um, appreciate everyone watching and we'll see you next time.